Uh, in the immortal words of Boney T, first the fat boys break up, not us. There's nothing to believe in anymore. I mean, like, if you just set aside the white savior complex that was perpetuated by Sandra Bullock's The Blind Side to begin with, set that aside, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a decent little movie, you know? And, and Michael Orr was more than a decent tackle, as Rita Hubbard, a.k.a. the NFL chick, knows it is time with the Ravens uh, in particular. Um, but now come to find out, it was all a hoax. They made it sign some Britney Spears, con- what is it, conservator- conservatory, conservatorship? What you call yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. What'd you call it, Michael? It's a conservatorship. Conservatorship. All right. Conservatorship. I, sound like, I sound like old boy. I sound like old boy on Hard Knocks, ch- uh, Charcucci board. <laughs> to say uh, That's the right way to say it as far as I'm concerned, by the way. Hey, I wasn't, I wasn't mad at it. I wasn't mad at it. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And then he didn't make any money, no royalty off the film. I mean, it's just, but he, he, he claims to have just fi- learned about this and their relationship deteriorated. So we're talking about relationships in this show today, reading what you know all about. Given your relationship with the Ravens, what'd you think of this story when you heard it? I, this is crazy, but it I'm not surprised. I don't know if that makes sense. It's, it's crazy, but I'm not surprised, right? I mean, I, from my understanding of what I remember, Michael Orr was never really um, on board with how they portrayed him in the movie to begin with when it first came out. I remember, yeah, yeah, he, he didn't he like the whole unintelligent, unintelligent yeah. thing. And remember in the movie, they had the little boy teaching him how to play football using cans on the table. Well, he was playing football allegedly when they met him already. So that was all, you can already tell that that was a a Hollywood spin that they put on it, which I can completely understand in terms of him feeling some type of way about being portrayed as unintelligent and not knowing how to play football. But then you hear these stories now coming out about, you know, the conservatory ship and the movie rights, which allegedly they were two different documents, but the allegedly the same lawyer you, was used for both the conservatory ship as well as the movie rights being uh, him signing away from his movie rights. So basically, Michael Orr has been played. And it's really sad and unfortunate that these people have used him to come up and and portray these guys as being oh the white saviors that you mentioned already Mike and then really to be some scumbags they just a bunch of scumbags they owe that man a lot of money because they used his name they used his likeness and I don't know how you can sleep at night doing this and not giving that young man a dime he owe they owe him a lot of money he's not even a member of the family Michael he's not he wasn't even adopted he was not adopted nope that's the thing that's the thing that gets me more than anything because they really wounded him uh financially and emotionally because the conservatorship you know really what it is and a a lot of times it is used and and a lot of people know about it from britney spears but really it's it's in a lot of cases it's used to help somebody who can't help themselves whether that person a minor or whether that person uh is an elder who has kind of lost um you know, like lost the ability to, to function on a day to day. It's not like they're totally, you know, incapable of making decisions, but for big decisions and to protect them from being taken advantage of. That's the whole purpose of it, to protect those who can't protect themselves. And they flip this around. I, mean, Ironic, I think it's just ironically. so heartbreaking. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, Rita and Mike, it's heartbreaking that Michael Orr recently found out that he was not a part of the family. Yeah. He always thought they adopted him. And to find out, not only did they not adopt him, but everybody else in the family is getting paid. They're all getting paid on, on just base oh, level. Story. Okay, just the base level compensation, $225,000 a piece for everybody yeah. in the family except for him. Like, I, yeah. they, can, they, they, can, they can lawyer us. They can talk about, well, you guys don't understand the nuance and the, you know, and this, the complexity of the entire situation. Explain that to me. Why did everybody else get two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, two and a half percent of the royalties, of the net proceeds, and my brother ain't get nothing. Not a dime. And there's so no, there's, 
There's no way that you can sit here and make excuses. I don't care about you saying, well, we made, we did this the legal way and all of these things. Where's the morality factor into all of this? And that's the part that right. I have a real problem with. You you allegedly were there to take care of this young man and right. really you did nothing for him. You, As far as I'm concerned, you acted like you were adopting him. You didn't do that. You acted like you were in his best interest. You didn't do that. So what exactly were you there for? And I don't care sure. what this that you have i don't give a damn about anything that you have to say about that what you did was wrong out of line and the fact that he just found this out allegedly six months ago in february he didn't even know how this went so long without him not knowing i i'm i'm confused about that but hey the truth will set you free now he knows and i hope that they get a whole bunch of backlash about this i hope they i don't think this will happen they probably won't do the right thing because they don't sound like good people but i hope they do the right thing and give this man the money that he deserves you use him to make a whole book and movie about him and he didn't get to see a dime for it the 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 saviors turned out to to be out in 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 it to screw him. It's it's, I mean I, I was I was blown away when I saw that. Yeah, Can I tell you go ahead. We go we go we go. Yeah, we gonna move I, on. And, and I'm wondering I'm wondering here how we feel about it. This is a guy that I've that I've interviewed before. I have a lot of respect for him. So we're talking about the movie. We keep talking about the movie, mm-hmm. and I know the movie was brought up in the lawsuit. The book. But the, the movie was based off of Michael Lewis's oh, best-selling book, book. And, Michael right. Lewis, and Michael Lewis is a is a terrific writer. I have a lot of respect for his writing ability and his reporting. Is there any should should we be talking about him too? Responsibility there. Should we be talking yeah, about? Yeah, sure. Anybody I mean, that like, perpetuated this story, yes. That's Anybody right. Perpetuated that's story, right. Perpetuated, yes. He brought the. St- story we didn't know about Hollywood didn't know about right. the story until Michael Lewis right. wrote about it. he wrote about it so Michael Lewis he got a best-selling book he got paid Michael Lewis got paid right. filmmakers no, got I'm, paid. I said perpetuated their family. story I should say perpetuated the the family story which was the lie that they yep. that they adopted him um all right let's get some positive Ravens news all right Rita since you're here <laughs> uh JK Dobbins off PUP, that relationship seems strained as he's looking for a contract. But as as the Ravens and Commanders uh, set to engage in joint practices this week, I want to talk to you because I saw Lamar Jackson the other day rave okay. about the relationship between him and Todd Munkin. Uh, and I know at one point you were on and we were talking about uh, OC when, when Greg Roman was gone, OC for Lamar Jackson. Uh, we talked about whether it was maybe the enemy at one point, left which when he got let go, ended up being uh, getting Todd Munkin from Georgia. But we're a long way away from Lamar Jackson asking to be traded and that relationship looking like it was ruined between him and the Ravens to now he seems to really be in a great place in terms of his ownership of this offense, the weapons they've given him, um, the freedom he now has. Uh, to direct the offense. I'm wondering what you expect to see out of him this year, not at the contract situation is in his rear view. Um, When it comes to his development and and advancement as a passer, and really even just this week against in in joint practices with a, with a pretty good commander's defense. And I want to talk about the commanders as well with you. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that this will be a great practice for him because the uh, front four for the commanders are really good with Montez Sweat and Chase Young. So this will be a good test. Now that offensive line for the Ravens is pretty good, but they're still trying to solidify the left guard situation. So it could get a little tricky with what they have on the other side from the commanders. But this will be a great test for Lamar and that offense. I do think that Lamar is definitely getting the keys to the car, not only from the Ted, uh, the Todd Monken perspective, because, of course, you know, now he has an offensive coordinator that will allow him to use his passing skills, but also from a political perspective, right? I mean, I think that we can all agree that when a guy gets paid a lot of money, they're not going to be like, we just want you to run the ball. We're, we're going to be a running offense. No, there's going to at least be some balance there at minimum, right? So I think now that you have that, you definitely have better pass catchers. What I saw from Zay Flowers uh, in the first preseason game, it, it oh, doesn't man. sound like much on paper, but the guy, they couldn't stop him. He had uh, a pass interference drawn um, in his it, for him, and he also had a holding drawn um, from the defender, and he's a good blocker. So it's 
it's really fun to see that. We know what Odell can do when he's healthy. I'm just interested to see how this offensive line can hold up against the commander's front four and how these wide receivers are going to look down the field. So that, that should be fun. The running game is going to be what it's going to be. They're always going to be always. good. They, they do very, very well in that regard. But the passing game should be a fun matchup to see how they fare well, particularly in the line of scrimmage. Michael, at the combine, I got to interview Zay Flowers. Fell in love with that kid. I can see why the Ravens love him. You know how I feel about that organization anyway. Zay Flowers was right in your backyard, bro. He wasn't, he wasn't no secret to you where he was balling out for BC. Joystick. But look, I, That's I'm what they call him. Yeah, yeah. And here's the other thing. This other thing. He's he's great. He's gonna be great for the Ravens because you know he had he, he had to overcome a lot. And I, I'm not even talking about his personal story. I'm just talking about on the field playing at Boston College, where it is not a great situation. He, they've never had a first round wide receiver ever in their history. He was a first uh, wide receiver drafted in the first round from Boston College. They had quarterback issues last year. They had offensive issues, and he still balled out when they knew defenses knew that they didn't have much else to worry about outside of him. So he is going to be a great receiver for the Ravens. I really believe that. And it's a shame the Patriots who can't draft a wide receiver. If you took the Patriots <laughs> Pro Football Hall of Fame and said, these are Hall of Fame receivers and here are their traits, they still wouldn't be able to draft a wide receiver. But still, the dude was right up the road at Boston College yeah. and they didn't take him. So I think they'll – uh, I think they'll – Hey, listen, listen, as somebody who, you know, is very uh, knowingly uh, knowledgeable of the Ravens organization, I am very used to this because remember, Stephon Diggs was right down the street at Maryland. So we've seen them pass on guys all the time. Now they just understand that they can't do that anymore. And in order to win in the NFL, they got to get some wide receivers. So I think that that's how Zay Flowers fell into their lap in this regard. (laughs) So let's, uh, before we let you go, I probably should have led with this because this is a deeper conversation that we got time for. Um, a, Michael knows this. I've loved Sam Howell since he was at North Carolina. I can't wait to see what he does this year. Like what I saw from him this past weekend in, in limited preseason action. But the commander's yeah. angle that I like to talk about with the two of you guys, because we've been gone for a minute. So we got to rewind for a second. Michael, I know you peeped this. This whole Ron Rivera volunteering that Eric B. Enemy. You know, some of the players, some of the players are their feelings and Kush and Avery and just upset because it's a little too intense and, and harsh. It's like, what have y'all done? What have any of you done in D.C. to complain about somebody coming from Kansas City? You know, when they re- reinvent offense in Kansas City and try to tell you how to do it better, Rita. Like... I, like this, this Eric B enemy stuff just knows no bounds. And I feel I, like if it weren't yeah. Eric B enemy, if he hadn't been discredited by so many people, whether it's the process or people like LaShawn McCoy, I don't think players would feel emboldened enough to bitch and complain about, God forbid, somebody coaching them hard. I thought it was professional football. I tweeted when this came out, I said, I don't know which one is worse. The fact that the guys are complaining or the fact that Ron Rivera actually told the media that this whole thing went down or the fact that the players didn't feel comfortable enough to tell Eric bien himself and went to Ron Rivera. Because first and foremost, y'all are grown men. And I thought that you could be able to go to another grown man. So I'm confused as to how that was able to happen. Also, I'm trying to understand how you are not taking in what you get from uh, Eric Bieniemy, who has won two Super Bowls in Kansas City. That is beyond me. Thirdly, Ron Rivera, uh, as for, from a media perspective, thank you for the information because it gives us something to talk about, but you really should not be telling us in-house business, and you know better. He does so then you try to clear it up. Then you try to clear it up the next day, and it made it worse than it did the, the first day. So I don't understand why you've already been a losing franchise, Then you turned around and said, oh, my players are complaining about this guy who came from a winning franchise and he wants to do this, do things this way. What does it say about you? This is a mess. All of this is a mess. All of this is a mess. I hope that these new owners find a way to shift all this BS out of here and clean the slate because this is ridiculous. Rita, you're so smart. You're so smart. You're so good. (laughs) Because you said uh, said a couple 
Uh, you know what? I, I'm putting some more money in the plate here because you had a couple good preaching points I'm going to agree with. I'm going to put a little more, more in the offering. So, look, you said he knows better. Ron Rivera knows better. And you're right. He does know better, which leads me to think he did it on purpose. Oh. Because he's insecure. He's insecure about Eric Bieniemy coming in, Ooh. who's head coaching material. But, He's but, head coaching material. But wasn't, Look, but wasn't only, that his partly his call? Well, we don't know. We don't yeah, know who's I mean, calling. I don't. I, it felt. I felt. It felt like he knew he had to get somebody with credibility on that side of the ball because his, his job. But his job maybe, is on the line. To your point, though, Michael. Yeah. Is, especially with new owners. I was going to say, and, and even if it had been his call, even if it was his call months ago. He comes yeah. in, he sees a guy oh, right. with champ right. with, with like <laughs> with, with like a champion championship aura he's around seeing, him. He's seeing how it's done. Once yeah. you win a championship, yeah. it's all in all sports. Once you win a championship and you go into a situation that is not ready, Michael, you know what we're talking about corporate America. You know what I'm talking about. Once you've been somewhere and then you go to an operation that is substandard, you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. This is not how we do this here. This is this how I supposed to look. Wait a minute. Why is he coming in? Why is he coming in later? Well, why did I told him to run 10 and out? Why is he going 12? Why did you right. break it short? All this stuff the nerve. is a detail or a tough coach. The nerve to be and paying Robert attention Vera, to detail. Right. He knows better. He knows better. So he said it. Not in a moment of weakness. I think he said it because maybe he's a little annoyed by it, or maybe he's insecure. He's being and he honest. doesn't like mm-hmm. the way he I like that thought Might process. Be. I like that. Be, but how, how, how's that lack of intensity? How's that worked out for him? Well, how far <laughs> has that gotten him? Rita, thank you so right. much. We appreciate you. All right, guys. See you soon. Hey, thank you for watching Brother from Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.